Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Economic Times Cutting Chai Stories brought to you by ETH. The urgency and pressure on business leaders and the incredible demands placed on them makes us often wonder how they have time for family, hobbies, or any downtime at a personal level. And let's not forget that they are mere mortals. This initiative by ETH is aimed at creating a deeper connection with them, understanding their views on life and leadership, and also get a sense of what they do to unwind and recharge when they are not in business mode. It is said that one conversation can change the direction of life forever. It is also said that there is nothing better than a cup of tea to get you going. So grab your cup of tea or coffee and join me, Ivan Rodericks, for a very exciting Cutting Chai conversation. Today, it's my pleasure to host Erez Israeli, Chief Executive Officer at Dr. Reddy's Laboratories, the global pharmaceutical company headquartered in Hyderabad. With over two and a half decades of experience behind him, Erez today oversees a business that is spread around the world. Pharma is an essential service and never more so apparent than during the COVID-19 pandemic. Interestingly, not a lot of information appears to be available in the public domain about Erez the person behind the CEO title. From my research, I understand there is a bit of a tough guy image built over the years in Erez's business approach, as well as probably because of his straight talking ways. But equally, I am intrigued that he appears to be a person of many untold stories. And it will be my endeavor in the next 25 minutes or so to attempt unravel a few of those untold stories. Erez, welcome to the ET Cutting Chai Stories. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure entirely. Okay, Erez. Let's start at the very beginning. If you were to go back to the early years of your childhood, school, or later college, could you outline some of the incidents that contributed towards shaping your foundation in those formative years? Uh, let's start with where you grew up, and you can then take it forward from there. Yeah, I was born in a relatively special community. It was uh, very small, maybe 150 people okay. uh, in, in Israel uh, that used to be communist. It actually was the most extreme form of communism. The people had no property, had no money, walked for the community and got from the community what the community believed they need. Um, and then uh, I, even after my parents left that community, uh, for living in the city, I, my relatives, my grandmother primarily uh, lived there, and I used to visit a lot. Okay. And that gave me a lot of dream about. It's never about you. It's about the community. It's about something that is bigger than oneself. Uh, something similar happened. Uh, I joined the army, uh, like most people in Israel, uh, at the age of 18. Uh, spent money in the, in, the, in the time. Unfortunately, some of those were war times. Uh, and it was, again, uh, something that it's never about you. It's about the unit, the people, your team. The team was a very important era. Uh, uh, and uh, after the army days, I used to backpack around the world. I actually backpacked for 18 months around the world. Okay. Went to Pacific Islands, Southeast of Asia, India, uh, 1989, my first trip to India. Wow. Uh, Africa. And this was the first time I was outside of the country. First time I saw the world. I was a backpacker. 75 rupees per day for me okay. and my wife for everything, accommodation, traveling. Uh, 
to eating, dining, everything. And I, I learned the, a very, very important side of India uh, of that time. For example, as well as Africa and the other places. Uh, so over the years, you accumulate all kinds of interesting experiences that you see different type of situation, different type of people. But one thing that came common is that the world is much bigger than yourself. <laughs> it's right. about something that is bigger than us. And that was kind of hit hard, at least, uh, at least to me. And, and you know, could, could you move further in terms of the, the jobs that you might have done? Uh, I heard that you borrowed money from your to-be father-in-law. Yeah, we got stuck in Africa. Okay. We had no money to come back, and I borrowed $800 to fly both of us okay. back to Israel, and they paid him out of my first salary. Um, uh, yeah, we we came uh, uh, in Israel normally uh, as you going for the army service plus uh, the backpacking time, etc. So I actually started we started uh, a university at the age of 24. Like normally in India, you will start at, let's say, around 18. Right. And uh, at that age, uh, you have to support yourself. Uh, nobody will support you. At least that was the common, uh, uh, let's say, the, what was customary at the time, uh, in the, at least in our family. And I had to walk, uh, so I found work. Um, I I was a gardener. I cleaned houses and this kind of stuff uh, to support uh, both of us education at the time. So it was a uh, kind of four or five years in which we did all kinds of jobs uh, to support ourselves. Mm, interesting. How how did pharma happen? Uh, by coincidence, uh, uh, my wife found uh, in the university a very small note that says that, uh, the, that Teva, at the time Teva Pharmaceuticals, that used to be at the time a, a very local Israeli company before it became a giant, okay. uh, needs a, a kind of temporary accountant uh, to replace somebody that went on maternity leave. Ah. And that's how I found myself uh, taking that. I said enough to clean houses and cut yeah. grass, and maybe we'll take a different type of a job. And I tried it. They accepted me. Okay. And uh, yeah. And the rest is history, as they say, Erez? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tell me, Erez, I'm interested in knowing one final thing. Uh, obviously, English is not your first language. How did you learn English? Uh, so, in in at the time in the education system of Israel, they did not teach English. Right. Uh, let's say whatever they did was very very basic. Uh, nothing that I I could not communicate. Uh, and even when we did our backpacking trip, we we gained something, but only to get by, like to buy food, to, to get along, but not to have even a conversation like we have now. So I picked up my English at the age of 35. 35? When I, 35. Wow. When, I, when Teva sent me to the United States and I had no other choice but to learn English. Okay. Uh, so it took me about a few months to pick up the language. I'm still not Shakespeare, yeah, but, uh, but I can manage. Right, right. So, great. After hearing your response to that first question, here's my summary of, of everything that I've heard. And so, no Ivy League. You, you started later than others. You, your success has come in a crunch time. Really short. Learned, you learned the main business language, which is the international language, which is English, much later than most. You, you said 35. But you did not let any of this stand in the way of your dreams for me that espouses that that formal education is not the only important thing when it comes to defining the trajectory of your career and more importantly underlining the fact that if you want something 
Nothing in the world can stop you from getting there as long as you have the belief, the grit, and the determination. I know you're a very shy person, but is that a fair summary? It's absolutely, I'm a, from a very, let's call it, low class, middle class type of a family. Uh, by design, money was not there. Like they were very socialist communist and uh, and, and naturally you got it right. I'm absolutely not an Ivy League guy. Uh, interesting enough, when I joined the United States, all the people I worked with were Ivy League guys. And I was amazed how well they're communicating, how well they're presenting. Hmm. I did not know what is a PowerPoint. <laughs> I still don't like PowerPoint. And, uh, and uh, at the same time, uh, I, I looked at them and they, 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 they were lacking some skills, although they were all great people. Yes. For example, the hardship that I saw, you know, at Army time and other times versus what they have. So the entire issue of what is stress, what mm. is pressure, what is camaraderie, what is achievable, we were completely in a different scale. Mm. Uh, and this was, uh, uh, this is one, the one, uh, what is innovative thinking? Uh, when you are learning to, work, to grow in a process and yes. well-designed process, it's sometimes hard to work outside of the process. When you're coming without the processes, it's easier to innovate. Yes. Uh, so we saw that they were uh, complementary qualities, and they were kind enough to teach me. Uh, and uh, they were very generous, and until now, they are my best friends. Wonderful. Wonderful. You touched on something very interesting, Erez, and in my little reading that I've done, they, they, they've said that most of the innovation that has happened in this world has come from hardship because it's when you, you go through hardship, you need to innovate. And I, I hear you that, that the ability to innovate and the hardships that you went through have probably stood you in good stead. So that's, that's my takeaway also. Great. And here's my next question for you. What values are most important to you as a leader? Yeah, uh, this is also something that brought me to India and to Dr. Eddie's in particular. Um, it's, it's never about you. Mm. That's a starting point. There is a purpose that is bigger than you, bigger than anyone, uh, which is about serving the communities around you. And uh, I grew up like that. That's what I said, in the community I, I brought up, in the army, in the, in the country. It is always about a purpose that is bigger than you. Right. Um, in the, um, this is the number one and the most important things for me. Uh, I, I will never work just for money or just for that kind of stuff. It's not that I'm against money, but uh, it's really not about that. It's about when you do something, are you truly bring value to your people, to the community around you, and, and, and live uh, with a positive impact? And, and the second is, and that's a sound, sorry about that. The, on that, when I met uh, uh, Prasad, um, I found that although we are coming from a very, very different background and uh, very, very different people, uh, very different characters, but we share the values. And mm. it was amazing to see. Uh, the second thing uh, that is important for me is that uh, when you do something, you put all in. You are there to be impactful, to, right. to be there, to be present. And um, also, this is the ask for anyone that works for us. You are you're serving something is very big. People trust you to do that well. You need to be all in. Yes. Yes. Very interesting. You know, it is uh, from the little research that I've done about you, simplicity and austerity are ways of living your colleagues associate with you. 
my question for you is this was this ingrained in you from childhood and that's the takeaway that i get or was it learned along the way was it a combination of both i'm assuming that it's a combination of both it's definitely was there from the very beginning um keep it simple was a very important role in the family and it's also very part of the culture of the country i'm coming from so you have that kind it's always about be direct be straight uh, no bs what you called and uh, and uh, and with that you are uh, impactful my grandmother used to say that the shortest way from a to b is straight line yes so after that i learned it is cool as well yeah. uh, so I, i'm a very much a believer in that um, i hate politics uh, i hate that people are not just saying what they need to say in order to be impactful and um, and uh, normally it's uh, uh, i saw that over the years uh, as it evolved as what is the best way to bring people from different cultures from different backgrounds from uh, with people with fears people that not know how to deal with unknown situation complex situation etc how to bring them to a that they will still do it in a simple direct easier way to be impactful yes uh, and that's over the years i probably i learned that wonderful wonderful uh it leads me to my next question eres it is said that creative thinking is the life blood of any organization how do you encourage it within your organization to keep the new ideas coming yeah uh, it's it was it was always uh, true it's probably more relevant than ever in today's world because the volatility around us is huge Yes. Uh, and we we have to keep innovate and innovate we have to keep innovation uh, innovate in the, in the much much faster pace um first you ask for it people needs to know that innovation is part of the game yes uh, it's uh, as simple as it sounds uh, you, people will not innovate if they don't know that they should and they need to second you need to embrace it innovation comes with risk risk of failures risk that your ideas will not be accepted risk in which uh, people may have different opinion uh, by the way which is in india it's not always easy for people uh, uh, and you have to create an atmosphere that it's okay to make mistake mm. it's okay to fail it's actually part of the process Yes. it is part of what we are here for we should learn from our mistake at least not to repeat it this will be not smart be smart uh, uh, but it is absolutely okay and you have to create a safe zone in which people can feel safe and safe from for example some people be, uh, when they see um, uh, senior authority Hmm. Uh, it can be senior leader or it can be you know a senior person from a different organization they will be shy respecting that person especially in a country that have huge respect for for others uh, like india hmm. so you have to create an environment that we are all equal yes the, and the the main main value that we are trying to do is still and it's very important for us in dr redis the people are equal i am equal to any employees of dr redis we may have do different position and it happened to be my shift tomorrow it will be somebody else shift yes but people were equal and people should speak their mind and treat each other as equal it's of course beyond just innovation it's a, it's a, it's a very it's a foundation for everything we do but this allow innovation wonderful wonderful so well explained uh, i'm going to ask you the only farmer related question in this curry chai conversation i want to focus on you but i'm very tempted to ask this question since you're here while india based global farmer companies have taken giant strides 
What is the one area you would like to see the industry do better? Yeah, I believe that uh, India uh, and the industry in India is amazing. I believe that the uh, pharma industry in India will lead, the, will lead the world and we are gaining as Indian industry more and more market share and more and more strengths and more and more talents are, uh, are coming for, from India. Yes. So I'm a huge, huge believer in India, a huge believer in the, in the India, in the pharma. Two areas uh, that can be better. One, more innovative products, more new products, that uh, new solutions uh, need to come out of India. And the second is the use of artificial intelligence. Okay. Once we will solve these two issues in India, uh, we will be here in India second to none. Nice. Very, very positive words coming from you as the CEO of Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. I hope people listening into this take note of that. Very interesting. Erez, how do you unwind? Any interests, hobbies or activities uh, that you would uh, like to share with us that you indulge in? Hmm. Um, uh, I... I do a lot of sport. I used to do in my past also some extreme sports like long distance, long distance running, swimming, stuff like that. In, since I joined India, uh, I'm doing primarily a yoga. Ah. And, uh, and, uh, and the yoga combined with fitness um, for health. Uh, I love it very much. Amazing invention by the Indian people that I wish I knew before I joined, I, I came to India. But right. now, uh, five years in India, I became a kind of a yogi. Wow. And, uh, not good, but love it. Nice. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to do it uh, even every day if possible. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful, great. Uh, I think you've really embraced India to a great extent. I can see a deep affection for this country when you speak. Wonderful. I I love India. I love India and I love the Indian people. Wonderful. Erez, um, how many countries have you lived and worked in? And there, there is a reason why, why I'm asking you this question. Because uh, I, I saw a video of you dancing to a Tamil song along with <laughs> your colleagues. So so you talked about India. So, so what I understand from you is that from this, this video is that Clearly, adaptability is your strength. Do, do you enjoy cultural things of that sort? Yes, so, so I do. And, um, and I do see also how uh, connected people are to their culture. And I, I, and I enjoy that connection. So I have a deep appreciation. This came also from my backpacking days. And of course, as I grew up and as I saw more countries, uh, and they lived in many countries is uh, uh, you are trying to look at the culture of the people from their eyes, from their glasses mm. and appreciate it. And uh, so, for example, uh, I, I loved the way uh, uh, Indian are dancing. So I, as you saw in the video, I'm not a good dancer. But <laughs> I, but I, I love the the way people are taking into it and also learn to identify between the traditional dance and the modern dance, etc., uh, which is part of the culture. Uh, the same way when you go to countries like Japan, like China, uh, United States, uh, which is more of an immigrant kind of mixed type of a country, uh, you see many, many types of people, many, many types of backgrounds, many, many types of action. And normally, the first thing I'm trying to do is to understand the, the roots of yes. where they're coming, uh, what, what, what is their uh, core values. And uh, in the case of India, it's, uh, it's amazing to see how deep the most uh, of my colleagues are so connected to their religion, to their family, to their background. Uh, always great to see that. 
Very interesting. I'm really enjoying this conversation. Uh, I know it's very late. You're joining us from Israel. I wish we could keep talking, but maybe at some other time. What, what I'm going to do, Erez, on that note is move to another part of this cutting chai conversation, which is called the one word, one line answer. Uh, it's very simple. I will throw a set of options at you or probably ask you a question and uh, would request you to respond in one word. Uh, you don't have to justify anything because all the answers are going to be right answers because these are your answers. It's a fun round. We want to get to know you better, uh, you know, beyond Erez, beyond the job designation, which is the chief executive officer at Dr. Reddy's laboratory. So are you ready for this? Please. Okay. Kindly choose one of the two options, books or movies. Books. Nice. Exercise or diet? Exercise. Friends or family? Family. Nice. You're very good at this. No, no, um, absolutely no doubts. You're giving the answer straight away. I, I like it. Comfortable silences or incredible conversations? Incredible conversations. Nice. Indian breakfast or all English breakfast? Indian breakfast. Ah, nice. Okay, coming to the subject of dancing, do you prefer dancing or making others dance? Dancing. That's it, okay. Three people who are closest to you, Erez? My wife, by far, and then my three kids, so it will make it four. Okay, that's very sweet, wonderful. Uh, could you name three qualities in a person that make a good friend? A honest, a somebody I share these values, and somebody fun to be with. Nice. What a lovely range of qualities you've chosen. Excellent. Could you name your favorite holiday destination in India and one internationally? So I enjoy Tamsala a lot. Okay. And internationally, we are a big fan of New Zealand, especially nice. the South Island. Nice, nice, wonderful. Uh, if you were a gifted painter and could paint anything, what would you paint? I would love to paint the Mona Lisa, but I'm absolutely not a gifted painter. No, that's what I'm saying. If you were a gifted painter, so that's fine. We would have Mona Lisa version 2.0. That's wonderful. Great. Uh, Erez, if you could start a charity, what would it be for? Uh, for people that need help to build their business. Nice. Very good. Last two questions in this segment. If you had your own talk show, whom would you invite as your first guest? I would love to invite uh, Gandhi. <laughs> I know Hi. we are not in the same generation, but it's a person I admire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention it could be anybody, somebody who's passed away, somebody who's current, even a fictional character. And so uh, I, I didn't mention that, but Gandhi, that's a wonderful choice. Final question. Fill in the blanks, complete the sentence. Life is incomplete without? Without joy. Without uh, joy doing that, being there. Nice. A wonderful note to, to end this cutting chai conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Erez, Israeli Chief Executive Officer at Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. Uh, Erez, I really enjoyed this conversation. There was a lot to learn for me personally, and I'm sure there's a lot to learn for those who will view. I, I liked your humility. I liked the clarity of your thoughts. I liked your groundedness, your roots, and... I liked your unwavering view on certain aspects, be it the values, the honesty, uh, no politics, straight line that your grandmother taught you from point A to point B, and so much more. Uh, as we end, I'm reminded of a, of, of a few quotes when it comes to you. One of them is that it said that success isn't just about what you accomplish in your life. It's about what you inspire others to do. And Erez, you come across as that leader uh, in and out. There's no doubt in my mind about that. 
again, this is an anonymous quote, the next one. It says, my responsibility as a leader is getting all my players playing for the name on the front of the jersey, not the one on the back. And again, for me, that comes across. It's, it's about teamwork that you believe, believe in. No individual is, is greater than the team. Uh, Erez, I had a wonderful time chatting with you. On behalf of ETH, I would like to wish you, your family, and Dr. Reddy's Laboratories the very best. Thank you so much. You are very kind with me. Thank you so much. You're most welcome.